April 14, 2014. Can I please have a roll call? Bird? Here. Bowerman? Yes, ma'am. Alec? Here. McKeon? Here. Swanson? Good evening. Tucker? Here. And Romanski? Here. Uh, I'd like to recognize any visitors to tonight's board meeting. Anybody that's uh, not on the agenda that would like to come forward? Seeing no one, we'll move right to uh, 2.1, which is uh, recognition of state level competitors. I believe we have a few people here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up, John. Come on Absolutely. Up. Thank you, Chairman Romanski. Uh, I'm John Jake here, Activities Director, and we do have some uh, recognitions tonight. And uh, to move things along, I'd like to first bring up our, our head wrestling coach, Mark Nye, to share a few words with you and uh, share his, his state competitor athletes with you as well. So, we got Coach Nye and, and uh, some young men, I believe they're all here, so if you want to come up with them, guys, and they'll share a few words. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having us here, and uh, we've got a number of guys here that we'd like to introduce and recognize for their accomplishments on the wrestling season. Uh, our wrestling season finished, our wrestling team finished 24 and 5 on the year, conference champions, second in the section. We're here to roll second, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're working on that. Uh, this year we got seven state qualifiers. It's been the most in uh, Shockey history. And uh, four place winners, which uh, matches our best ever. We're going to have them introduce themselves, and uh, we'll start over there with Alex. I'm Alex Crow. I wrestle on your team. And your parents are? Oh, my parents are Rob and Nancy. Uh, I'm Alex Lloyd. I wrestle on 20 this year. My parents are Bill and Carrie. I am Brent. I wrestle 106 this year. And my parents are Jenny and Bryce Jones. I am Owen Wester. I wrestle 152. And my parents are Pam and David. Uh, I'm Tyson Leanne. I wrestle 132. My parents are Monty and Barb. I'm Michael Wagner. I wrestle 170. My parents are Ann and Steve. I'm Alex Colvin. I wrestle 138. My parents are Tom and Stephanie. This is the best they've been behaved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to mention a couple of the guys here that place in state. Uh, Alex Crow uh, wrestled at 115 pounds and placed sixth in the state tournament, so he's all state uh, wrestler. Next to him is Alex Lloyd. Alex Lloyd is an eighth grader, finished the season with one loss. Uh, last year he placed fifth, and this year he placed third. Uh, next to him is Shockey's first ever state champion, uh, Brent Jones. <laughs> Season undefeated. Wow. Uh, anybody 41 and 0, 41 and 0 on the season. Uh, at 106 pounds. Next to him is our second state champion. <laughs> 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 Teacher in sales. 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 Teacher
right, thank you. Um, our next group, uh, we're going to go to our boys' basketball program and uh, to, to introduce some safety words uh, regarding the boys' basketball team. I don't think they're all here. The number of uh, kids involved in spring activities and work and stuff as well. We're very fortunate to have all the wrestlers here because they're all involved as well. But we welcome up our head coach, Bruce Kuyat, and the, the team members that are here, please. Very good. I think I've, I've talked about this before at our banquet, and this is a group that excels beyond the basketball court. Um, they were academic state champions, or academic sectional champions this year. Uh, we have two 4.0 students on our team, and our team grade point was 3.34, so I think uh, that's something to really be proud of. And they've also been a team that has gone beyond just being basketball players. Uh, we've done a clinic for Special Olympics. We've gotten involved with Coaches versus Cancer and Feed My Starving Children. And uh, they're just tremendous to our little ball boys that come, the third graders that come and, and uh, spend time with us at our game. So they're way beyond what they've done in basketball. And uh, we came, with any of you that followed us, we came with uh, about that close to being in the state championship <laughs> game. And we were looking forward to it because we had played Lakeville North in a three-point game earlier in the year, so we felt we came pretty close, and we knocked on the door, but uh, we did something only eight teams get to do, and that's we won the last game of the year. So this is our third place uh, state championship team, and we've got a good representation here, but I'm going to have them introduce themselves to you. Uh, Michael Longman, I'm senior, 5'10", uh, over. <laughs> 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 um, I'm James Joyce, and I'm also a senior. I'm Evan Hagen, and I'm a junior. Uh, Zach Etrup, a senior. Jake Myers, senior. Dominic Schlumper, senior. And this was a team that uh, was very exciting to watch. We had 11 games this year that were decided by five points or less. So uh, it just, it's been a real pleasure for me uh, in my advanced age to coach a team like this. And uh, they've been just nothing but a, a very pleasure and a great representation of our uh, of our school. So thank you for having us here. We really appreciate it. I think I have, what, five minutes till we have to finish up with this. I'll just stand here for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. Mary James can talk. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to stand here and wait till the until the five minutes was up, and then just 30 seconds before, kind of hand out the... Oh. You, you represented the district so well with the way you played, and I guess you were the favorite team of all the finalists there because of the way you played. You sure, certainly outshine Hopkins in your demeanor, and we really appreciate what you guys did for, for the district. And I have certificates for Dominic Schlepper, Never heard that name in this district. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Myers? Zach F. 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 Evan Hagen? James Joyce? And Michael, I'll let you say your name. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> All right, thank you. We have one more group, and our, our last uh, young lady just, just entered here. So uh, our most uh, recent state competitors that just finished up this past weekend at Wayne High School in the state speech competition. Um, so to introduce them and say a few words about the season, I'd like to introduce our coaches, Rachel Evenson and Katie Depp. Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is Katie, Hi. and we are the coaches of the Shakopee Speech Team. Um, these three young ladies were able to compete at the state tournament this past weekend. Our program has grown exponentially over the last few years, and um, we've been working very 
diligently to make sure that they achieve the excellence that is in track and one of the things we work really hard on is making sure that they're good competitors and good sportsmen and we always um, try to be as polite and courteous as possible. <laughs> um, so anyway, these three young ladies were very, um, are very accomplished. We have the Toratia. You want to say a little bit about your pedigree? Um, I am in great speeches, so we take a historic speech and analyze it. I'm Ayushi Jane, and my category is called Creative Compression, in which I basically just write my own pieces. I'm Bonia Viju, and I'm in prose. It's kind of like drama, so you We're lucky enough to know what they've ranked out of all of the students that compete in their category in the state. Bonia is seventh in the state in her category. Ayushi is tenth, and Vittura was thirteenth, and that's out of a couple hundred other competitors in the same category. It's nice to see such a nice. Girls, uh, I remember when I was in high school and college, speech and debate was something I did. And of all the things I learned at that time, I think speech, being able to get up and speak in front of people, has helped me immensely. And all the friends I made and all the fun I had just made a very special experience for me. So congratulations and thank you for representing us at State and doing such a wonderful job. Bonilla? Thank you very much. As as much as we would like to have everyone stay for our meeting, you're very <laughs> welcome. You're welcome to leave now. And we'll take just a two minute break here anyway. Yeah. We're going to take just a two minute communication break. Yeah. Getting going to stay counted, we might have to actually expand our board just for that reason. You know. What a problem to have. Yeah, what a what a tough problem. What a problem to have. Congratulations. We're good. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. So many people are left. <laughs> now we got chairs. We'll go, uh, go to consideration of the yeah, agenda. To add. Yeah, to Yeah. <laughs> so it'd be kind of difficult to add something before we consider the agenda. <laughs> so we'll go to item three, consideration of the agenda. And we have one addition at our desk. Yep, we have one addition, 2.2. Uh, we have the uh, privilege of having Senator Eric Pratt here to do a very, uh, just a brief legislative update or any maybe any kinds of Q&A we might want with, with Eric, and um, that's our only additional agenda item. So is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The agenda stands approved. And we'll go to back to 2.2 .2 and Senator Pratt. As Senator Pratt comes up here, of, of all of the legislators I've had the privilege to work with, Senator Pratt has been by far the most consistent, the most uh, uh, concerned, the most um, the person who's come to me the most for advice or counsel, and um, and I've really appreciated you seeking input uh, throughout uh, the short time that I've been here and the short time I've known you. You've uh, you've done an outstanding job. The superintendents respect the work you do, and we really appreciate all the efforts you're putting in down or up in the <laughs> Twin Cities. So thank you for for being here. Well, thank you, uh, Superintendent, Madam Chair, and Board. It's, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, as many of you know, I served on a school board for many, many years as chairman and treasurer. And uh, I think uh, I, I have a very good understanding of, of the work that you do and, and the impact that you have on our children's lives. So thank you for your service uh, to our kids. It's, as I was joking before, 
um, you guys actually get to see results. Now, sometimes it's St. Paul, I don't feel that way. But, but uh, um, we are, I am trying to work hard to represent uh, uh, all of our communities and all of our school districts to make sure that um, uh, we can get the right, uh, the right twist on, on legislation that's going to be helpful to uh, all three of the school districts in my, in my uh, Senate district, which are Prior Lake, Shakopee, and Jordan. Um, as well as all three cities. So I just talked to Superintendent uh, Thompson and said, gee, I'd like to come sit for a few minutes, and then he invited me to speak, and then I went, oh, shoot. I better, I better get ready for this. Um, and a couple of things he talked about. We have a supplemental spending bill. Um, we just passed uh, the anti-bullying bill, uh, also known as Safe and Supportive Schools. Um, and then just a, another bill that, that may be of interest to you, um, the health, uh, health Insurance Transparency Act, or, or um, the PEAT bill, as we like to call it. So uh, just real quick on the supplemental spending, um, I can speak to the Senate bills more than I can the House bills. They're going into conference committee, but the Senate has proposed spending uh, $209 million extra uh, this year. Uh, the spending that would, would uh, go forward then would add an extra uh, $740 million to the budget ongoing. As far as the uh, part on education, the Senate has proposed spending an extra $41 million uh, in, uh, in uh, 2015, and then that would be an extra $66 million um, in ongoing spending out in the tails uh, based on that. And it's being based on the current uh, surplus of $1.2 billion. Um, the Senate bill is heavily skewed to early childhood. Uh, over almost 70% or $28 million of the $41 million that the Senate has proposed um, would go to early childhood. $16 million for school readiness and ECFE, and an additional $12 million for early learning scholarships. Only about $5 million really going to uh, K-12 uh, education, and most of that is targeted to ELL. Um, I do think ELL is important and needs some additional funding. Um, my personal preference is, is that we would have given the board more uh, autonomy and authority to to uh, adjust the spending as, as they saw needed. Um, another piece is a small number, uh, a small amount going to covering uh, reduced lunches to make those uh, mm -hmm. as a non-cost to, uh, uh, to poor and working families. Um, and then a small amount, one-time funds for teacher evaluation for non q comp schools. Um, teacher evaluation has not been delayed. It was a key portion of our, our key provision in our waiver for No Child Left Behind, and so that will continue to be moving forward. Just as a, as a comparison, uh, where the Senate proposed spending $41 million in 2015, uh, the House proposed $75 million in additional spending, of which about 75% would be at the discretion of the board, so putting more of it on the formula than uh, really targeting it. Uh, as far as safe schools, uh, that bill passed, and a lot of changes went into it. And Superintendent Thompson, I appreciate your input on that. Um, I kept and tried to keep in close contact with uh, all three of the superintendents, as well as uh, superintendents throughout the state, to make sure that we got a bill that worked um, in in all types of districts. Uh, I I was a, a part of the negotiation team uh, in the Senate to help get a number of changes as compared to the House version that passed last year. And so there were really some key, uh, uh, some key provisions that got added. Um, we really did tighten up the definition on bullying in the Senate version, uh, reinforced that we were trying to protect all kids. Uh, the original version would have put schools in um, the role and responsibility of tracking kids for cyberbullying 24-7. This now just says that you have to deal with it if it becomes a problem in our schools. Um, there's stronger parental notification in the current Senate bill than the House bill where there's a presumption that we would talk, we would notify the parents. Um, there's fewer mandates on volunteer training, um, more local control on staff training and policy definition. Um, we now have a right for the student to present a defense, so if they're, if they're accused of bullying in the past, in the previous version there was no provision for the student to defend himself, uh, now we have that. There's also a penalty for false reporting. So if a student is uh, falsely accuses another student, there's a penalty back on that student. Um, 
And the Climate Center, which was one of the most controversial pieces of the uh, legislation, uh, was expected to go on in perpetuity. Uh, that will be sunset after five years. Uh, some of the provisions that, um, that can still concern me is there's new powers for the Commissioner of Education to oversee local school districts and how they implement the bullying policy. And it sets it apart from any other policy because, you know, really the commissioner doesn't have a lot of direct oversight over school districts. Um, but, but this is one where uh, the language is, is kind of concerning in that she may be able to uh, directly affect uh, uh, policies. Uh, we had wanted strong, I had wanted stronger parental notification, one that would more closely follow the Data Practices Act uh, versus just a presumption. Uh, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get that. Um, I also had an agreement on to sunset the Climate Center after three years, and uh, that was amended to five years uh, on the floor. And so uh, uh, the concern there being is, is you know, we could uh, have the school Climate Center and the School Climate Council, which is a, an unelected board, uh, sunset after three years and reauthorize it if there was a need. This puts it out five years and, and potentially keeps it ongoing for a longer period of time. And then uh, there's also a financial impact to some of our outstate schools. Um, really, uh, a lot of the work that sub suburban schools have done uh, around this issue have been absolutely outstanding. And, and Director Tucker and I met uh, and, and talked about some of the good things that were happening and shocked me. And so that was helpful as, as I was working on this bill with the authors. And then um, I had also co-authored another bill that was uh, based off the North Dakota law. It has an A++ rating from bullying police, no financial impact to schools uh, that would be mandated by the state. Uh, it was supported by the Attorney General um, prior to this discussion. And, and one piece that I really liked about the, the bill that we proposed was it provided safe haven or immunity for staff that were acting in good faith and within policy. And uh, the current bill is not. And then um, the last, the last update I wanted to give you guys just happened uh, uh, late last week was the Health Insurance Transparency Act, or we call it the PEEP bill. PEEP stands for Public Employees Insurance Program. And uh, what this would do is is require all districts to get a bid from PEEP every two years, unless it's agreed to go longer than that. Uh, for health insurance, so you have to rebid it uh, every two years. And then um, it gives an extra $300,000 to PEEP to do these bids. Now the concern I have with this is, is one, um, we're forcing a bid from a government entity when um, uh, all indications show that every time PEEP is bid, or not every time, but most times PEEP bids, somebody else comes in with a lower bid or better services. Um, the second piece is that it gives people a little bit of a, they, they currently do these bids for free, so uh, it doesn't seem like there should be an additional expenditure um, for them. Uh, now, Superintendent, I can't remember, are you self-insured? No, not at okay. this time. So for some of the districts uh, that are self-insured, there's also a requirement that the self-insureds go out and rebid their servicing. That was out of the uh, Senate bill, but still in the House bill. and, and um, this is, this is a bill that was strongly opposed by MSBA. So those are kind of the, the key updates as related to education. I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Go ahead. Um, Senator Pratt, it, remind <coughs> me, I'm not in depth familiar with the Safe Schools Act, but as I recall reading one of the summaries that came from AMSD, uh, it seemed like the school boards can enact a policy as long as it's in compliance with the majority of the model or, or in compliance with the model at the state level. In other words, we don't have to take what the state put and passed in law and just stick it in Shakopee. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. And that was part of what I talked about as far as being having more local control right. over the definition and policy of, of bullying. Um, that you can, just like you do probably with MSB model policies, mm -hmm. yes. you take them, you modify them to meet your needs, you can do the same thing with the state policy, as long as it meets some key provisions. Exactly. Okay, good, thank you. And that, I, you know, I thought that was a positive change. Yeah. Senator, when did you say the, the PEEP bill will be on the floor? Well, the PEEP bill uh, passed the Senate 
uh, last week, passed the House uh, earlier, uh -huh. so it's going to conference committee. Um, and so there were a few good changes that came out of the Senate version, and, and so we'll have to see where that goes. Um, again, I think that's going to be, in my personal belief, it's going to be a burden on school districts um, and make it harder, especially if you're in a co-op, uh, to get, uh, because you're going to be going out so often um, that you're not going to be able to take advantage of some of the long-term provisions. Now there is there is one there is an out there, and as long as your largest bargaining unit agrees to extend the contract, then you can go out as far as four or five years. So that may be partly answered. Then I'm guessing this must have been championed by Education Minnesota. It, it was Education Minnesota, at least from when I saw it, was was the lead um, proponent. But, but since it has a proviso that Mr. Bargaining Unit agrees not to go out, that, that's helpful. Well, we, what we wanted to do is we wanted to say it should go out four years uh, and then negotiate down to two. Uh, currently, it's that you have to go two unless you negotiate to four. And that was based on 60% uh, of districts and co-ops have four or five year uh, agreements in place. So it's going to make it mandatory that you go out for get a bid from PEEP every two years? Okay, uh, unless you, Right. Sure Unless your local bargaining unit agrees to extend yeah. it, but yes. So you have to get three bids, at least one of them has to be from me. Which, so if you have a bid out there that might give you better, more aggressive price at the three-year mark, you need to get your bargaining unit. Mm -hmm. right. The difference is um, the House bill says that the largest bargaining unit has to agree with, on which bidders are going to go forward. The Senate bill says you, you just need to consult. Uh, so it makes it a little better in choosing who the providers are. Yeah. Yeah. Senator, back to safe schools. When's the implementation uh, deadline? And when, when must the, the local school boards have the policy in place, the revised policy? Um, let me just double check here. I believe it as I believe it's um, there are different There are different implementation dates, the model policy. The School Climate Center will, will go into effect uh, uh, July 1. Uh, model policy, I believe, is uh, effective next school year. Okay, so by, I would assume Fall MSBA 14. is going to come out with their, yeah, they're their, their version. Yeah. They're probably on top of that now. Okay. And, I, and I believe the policy is, is like an October uh, deadline. So the, the, the State Department of Education will come out with their model policy, and then you'll have a couple of months to take a look at it and model it. Right. Modify. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll just say thank you for your service and representing our community well at the state level. Well, thank you guys. And, and you know, what a treat to be here with the kids that uh, have been doing uh, activities. Uh, I was when I was on the school board. I was a strong proponent of, of activities, and not only hearing about their success uh, in competition, but hearing their success in the classroom. And so, congratulations to you and, and your staff for doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we'll move to item four, uh, consent items. Is there a, mo a motion to approve consent? So, mm. is it tied? <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? I would like to uh, remove 4.1.1 if we say. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We'll go to 4.1. 4.1.1 is retirement, and I just want to note that it, it, maybe it's just a big deal to me, but you have Neil Johnson on there, and Neil actually happened to be the last staff member in the school district that I actually ever saw in the school. He was a uh, student teacher uh, the year I was uh, a, a sophomore and then uh, actually started at the school this year as a senior. So. But uh, so that means he served uh, a little bit over, over 35 years of our district. So, dating uh, him or dating well, you? Jane both of them. <laughs> and he also, when the students wanted an AP calculus teacher, Neil stepped up yeah. and stayed one chapter ahead of him. <laughs> so, with that, I would uh, make a motion to approve 4.1.1. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
the motion will pass. We'll go to item 5, all business discussion items, and 5.1 is the community survey. Crystal will be presenting. voted, why you didn't, um, if you voted in support or in opposition and why. So I think it's going to give us some pretty good idea about um, what had happened. Krista, would you mind scrolling back up? Sure. One of the things, just for those folks at home, the box, uh, yeah. uh, number three, if you look at number three, do you, or excuse me, number four, would you say a little bit about what that box could... So what? they'll be able to fill that out um, if they were supportive of the referendum, why. Um, and then above that, or below that, um, if they were opposed to the referendum and why. There's and is that, a, is that like a sentence or two, or can they type? They can type. They can so type. they could, if they want to go at length, they can. I made them as big as I could because I feel like if people want to sure. talk, they, this is their opportunity to okay. do it. So I didn't want to limit um, characters. Okay. Um, this is the one, if you were opposed, tell us why. And if people want to talk again, there's that other response. If they heard from an organized group when they made their decision about the referendum, um, Peter thought that that was um, something they've asked a lot in the last couple um, failed referendums that they've worked with. Um, when people made the decision, because that can tell us a lot about what happened. Um, information where you got your information. So things that we put out, they can also do the other box. Um, and then identifying yourself. Who are you in the community? And those are some other options. And is the survey itself, can they do it anonymously if they'd like to? Yes. It'll all, it'll be anonymous. Oh, to that question? No, uh, the, the survey yeah, itself. Yeah, it'll be anonymous. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll put it out a couple of ways. Um, on our website, the Education Forward website, it'll be embedded in there. Um, I'll promote it on our website, too, on the main page. And um, the headlines. We'll also have it on Facebook and Twitter. Um, hoping that the paper will help us with that. Um, and we'll also have hard copies available here at the district office and I'll also distribute them to all the schools. So if people just want to walk into the office and fill it out on paper, they're more than welcome to do that. And if there's other suggestions on how we might right. get these out here, whether it's at Cub Foods or you know, where, wherever it's at, obviously the goal is, is to get as high of a response rate as we can get to, to get feedback from folks. And um, if they want to simply even just come right in to Sarah or Crystal and fill it out while they wait, we can have them do that here too. So if there are other ways that people can think of, certainly let us know. And we'll be looking at um, kicking this off in the next week. Whenever, the, whenever the, you guys are comfortable with that. Okay. One question, Crystal. I'm yes. assuming that anyone who chooses to fill this out electronically or live, um, they don't have to answer every question. If for whatever reason, they um, don't. The star ones I have are the required ones. I can change it, you guys. Um, I kind of wondered if that's what that was. But they're only on electronic format. So if somebody came sure. in, they sure. could yeah. do it however yes, they want to. Yes, that's true as well, because I can't make them fill it out. <laughs> yeah. but. Well, and it makes me wonder if should we make those doing it electronically either? Do all of them. Yeah. Not that all the information isn't good. I just didn't want to constrain right. somebody if they right. thought, I, I get, get the question 10, now I don't want to do it because I didn't want to answer that. Is part of it the autopsy part of it that if you voted or if you didn't vote, this helps to identify if we're going to go forward with something? Right, it's, and, it's, and it helps us learn about the voter, oh, you yeah. know, filling it all out, which you guys yeah. understand. Yeah. So I guess, oh, I'm sorry. 
So I guess part of what I would want from the board is if, if you have those feelings either way to either let us know now or else you can uh, shoot Crystal an email and let her know if what your feelings are if you if you need a little time to process process this and what what's the purpose what are we what are we going to do with it well hopefully we'll bring them back to those guiding coalition and action teams and show them what the community has said to us about why they voted why they, why they supported the referendum and why they opposed it so that it can help us move forward as we start to look at what we're going to do next what is the end date i don't know you guys we haven't set that okay <laughs> I think it'd probably be a good question to ask Guiding Coalition and Action Team. You know, when, as we look at the timetable of moving forward, when would they want these types of results? Yeah. That'd be that would be my thought, Mary. And probably having it open for a while would be a good thing too, so that mm -hmm. people have time to fill it out. It's a couple things. My initial reaction would be, uh, in the interest of keeping it as <coughs> inclusive as possible, I guess I would probably eliminate the mandate <clears throat> and instead have a leading statement or paragraph that lets everybody know clearly the more you know information the more you, can you provide, fill out is the, the better. better it's going to help us I think that might be a little bit more flexible I would also recommend um, uh, just another location is like um, the library probably the post office some places where folks without kids might normally go you can pick or, up a copy yeah. and either send it in or mm -hmm. bring it in is this going to be? Um, is this going to be the type of survey where when you fill it out, you'll see the results as it goes, or is it going to be closed and? No, yeah, public? it'll be okay. closed. There's a progress bar, but that's not going to play. Well, the concern I guess I always have with online surveys is uh, having a mechanism in place to uh, ensure that only one person is yeah. yep. one survey. Yeah, this will this will track. Okay. Mm -hmm. to make sure that only one. Is it one per email address? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One per email. Although, I guess someone could fill it out online and then come yeah, into the yeah. school sure. office. I don't know that we can ever place that entirely. Right. It's probably not that big an issue to worry about. So. Especially if we're doing hard copies. Yeah. Yeah. But you also may have a family that has a spouse. <laughs> yourself and then a spouse. So you may get two hits on that. We have different yeah. opinions, even. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Do you have any crystal? Yeah, let me know if you guys want anything changed. Or I think it would probably be, um, uh, even though this is a discussion item, uh, could we could we get approval for, for this? I'm going to ask that we change it to the board taking action on this, if, if that fits the scope of what the board's comfortable with. That way, that way as a community, they know that it's been, you know, board yep. sanctioned. I can make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to make a, I guess, I don't know if it's a friendly amendment or what exactly you're moving, Matt, because I would I would suggest a line with what Scott said, that we remove the mandate from the questions mm -hmm. and leave it open-ended yep. in all formats. So take the required yeah. Yep. Is that okay with the motion maker in the second? Yes. yes. Okay. Any other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion will pass. Thank you, Crystal. Thanks, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. And we'll go to item six, old business business action items, um, excellence of facilities and operation guiding and change document. I think we could uh, probably take these in a large uh, grouping, um, and I'll share the responsibility, I think, with Reggie a bit um, as we as we talk about education forward. Um, Sarah, why don't, okay. So here, what I wanna do is I wanna take you through the Thursday night's journey. Um, as as, as um, the school board knows, we've had, we've been really blessed to have a lot of people um, sign up for guiding chain, or for our um, uh, guiding coalition and also the action teams and so part of our responsibility tonight is to I'm going to ask Reggie to maybe speak a little bit to um, selection of the of the two two memberships and um, as he's um, uh, thinking about that I want to take you through Thursday night's agenda for what that would look like for our community so if you take a look up here um, this is in draft by the way uh, we're looking at 
having the key objectives be orientation meeting for the district guiding coalition. So in other words, we'll talk about what are the roles, responsibilities that we have as a, um, as, as a community. What are the things that we're going to um, follow for, for those kinds of things. The action team will be assembled that night for our excellence in operations and facilities. Um, technology and academics will be represented by Nancy and JP, but their teams won't be meeting that night. Uh, that night will be focused on by the operations group, and it'll be focused on by the guiding coalition. Uh, C, develop the work sessions for the guiding coalition and the excellence in operations. In other words, um, we have monthly meetings for the guiding coalition. We have um, every two weeks is where the action teams will meet. So for the action team of operations and, and uh, facilities, they'll meet that night. Then they'll also meet in two weeks, and we have a schedule there that we'll roll out to you as well. And then we pull it all together back in, the, in those monthly meetings. So we're going to talk about what those work sessions will look like. Our agenda for that evening, we'll, have, we'll ask folks to check in at 545, get name tags, pick up materials and packets. Um, I'll do a short introduction at 6 o'clock. 6.15, Dennis Cheesebrow and Teamworks is going to go through, again, as I mentioned, the purpose, the norms. Um, you know, even though um, we have 150, 60 plus people, um, these are people who haven't necessarily worked together as a team before, and you have to set some norms and some guidelines on what that would look like. We'll take um, folks through the, the school board's three-year operational map and, and our strategic road map because we have three years of goals already set up. And I think that sometimes when you have coalitions or you bring in consultant groups, and in this case it's a whole lot of consultants, we have to make sure too as a board that they that the group understands where the board has kind of put some stakes in the ground, where, the, where there's flexibility, where there's openness, where are the, where are the things that we're really been focused on in the, in the past and going forward in the future. Um, and then education forward framework, I'll go over that as well. And then the guiding coalition role and responsibilities. Sometimes with, with teams and with groups, um, if you aren't really clear on what a group's role is, they may think they're making final decisions versus recommendations versus um, are they in a consultive role? Are they, you know, what are the roles? And so we'll clearly spend the time talking that through. Um, and then at 7 o'clock, action team updates. JP will give a real short update, but the truth is he's just starting, I think it's next Monday, is his uh, first group meeting. And so he'll talk about what will be happening. A reminder for the folks in the community that in the technology group, that's a high-end kind of a techie thing. And I guess geek is a real positive word now. It wasn't when I was in school, but it is now. And there's a, we've got a bunch of folks from the district and a few outside parents or community members who, who will be on that action team. But uh, full disclosure on the technology group, for the most part, they speak a different language and they'll bring it to the guiding coalition and everybody will hear that night the direction they're heading. Also the board, because technology is also, um, when we do our E-rates and so forth, we already have a, a five-year plan, but the purpose of this action team is to review, to take, analyze it, to make recommendations just like any other action team. But I wouldn't want folks to think that they would show up and an action team means you're going to be able to sign up for technology because technology is not in and of itself already an action team. If someone in the community just says, you know, I really, really want to be on that, JP is more than willing to find a spot and a role. So, so that would work its, its way out. But for the most part, that when we talk action teams up here, the action team is, is focused on the folks who want to deal with operations and heavy on facilities. What are we doing with bricks and mortar? The other group, Nancy then will spend uh, the rest of the time speaking to what I would call the most important piece of our district, and that is the academics. And inside the academics, um, what Nancy's group will, will give us a preview on is academics, a little bit of the arts, a little bit of the athletics as it pertains to our curriculum and so forth. Um, but we want to make sure that um, folks recognize that our academic group 
is made up of the academic experts. Uh, Nancy had a um, uh, application process and Nancy and her team went through and selected the folks that um, had the expertise background and so forth to make up that action team. But we also know in the way that we've set up our uh, framework that we've got academics on the top. They will report into the guiding coalition so folks will hear that. And let's face it, the action team can't do their due diligence unless they know what's the driving factor behind academics. So the dance we have to do is we have to make sure that academics reports out well to the action team for operations and facilities and does an outstanding job for guiding coalition because we can't make good, good decisions unless we know what direction our academic team wants us uh, to consider. So we'll spend time at 7 o'clock doing that. Then, frankly, um, we're going to build in a little time in case people find out this isn't what they signed up for. That if they want to walk away, it'll be no hard feelings, or if it's just not their thing, um, they'll be able to take that opportunity during the break to just kind of sail away. And, uh, and again, no hard feelings. Or we had a heck of a time. We did, um, we and Reggie will talk a little bit about appointing the groups. Maybe there's someone or a handful of people, whatever it looks like, that really would like to make a switch. And that would be between the appointed group, the guiding coalition, and the action team. And I think as a board, um, what, we've, what we've said is that if in the spirit of openness and flexibility, we said that we would be open to that. So Dennis Cheesebrow will also look at the teams that were assembled. Um, and during that break in there, there will be an opportunity to talk to um, Reggie and, and Mary as our um, kind of our executive committee, our chair, vice chair, and just offer up um, to them that, you know, maybe for whatever reason they would like to switch. And, and we're, we're open to, to that. But as one could imagine, um, you can't have wholesale changes to defeat what we've done because we really did a fine job, I believe, of, of making sure that we're well represented and cross represented. Um, so then what's going to happen is, is all the folks that are on the action team who really want to get into the weeds, they want to get in and know the details behind all the district stuff um, from football fields to art to uh, performing arts to, um, you know, whatever. Uh, when it comes to bricks, mortar, and design, that's what that action team is going to do. And um, it's going to be... Uh, the heavy lifting, that's how I describe it. That's going to be heavy, heavy work with lots of details, lots of information, tons and tons of option. No options are eliminated. All options are on the table. Um, the guiding coalition will separate, and that group will continue talking about their role with the three legs of the stool and what it means to consult with a board and then board members are there to listen to the group because Dennis will also take us through some exercises in where we've been and where we want to go as a, as a listening group. And so um, that group too will do heavy lifting, but that heavy lifting is more um, mile high to practical, whereas the action team is get your hands dirty, you're right in the weeds. And uh, we very much need both groups. Neither group is more important than the other. I would really want to stress that because we can't do one without the other. You know, guiding coalition isn't guiding anyone if it isn't for the action teams and, and vice versa. Um, when we split up, we have um, Dennis doing the guiding coalition, and then we have Scott McQueen, Pat Overham, and Michael Hoheisel there. Again, there will be a ton of Q&A available. And then we'll pull back together at 8.45. Dennis will pull us back together for kind of a large group, uh, key messages, takeaway, with the hopes that, um, and Dennis is good to get us done on time. I think that's been his, his thing, that people get cranky when they don't leave on time. So we'll get everyone out of there about 9, and then uh, um, all of our board members will be, um, whenever we have a meeting of um, the action team or guiding coalition, uh, we'll mark it as a quorum of the board may be present. 
because um, when the action teams are out there meeting, you know, part of our responsibility that we've seen or that we would probably like to do as a board is either, like we did with um, referendum meetings, uh, Matt would go to one, Scott would go to one, Sean would go to one. We could do that, or it's possible that we could just say um, the, uh, the academic group is meeting um, at, at 6 o'clock one evening, and on the academic uh, night, Nancy says to me, you know, we're going to talk about that CAPS Academy trip. You know, the board might want to hear that. But then we'd be in a, in a different role. We'd, we'd be in a, a complete listening role. The, the idea would be is that we're not talking, we're doing all the listening. So that's something, too, that we'll talk about with Dennis and the Guiding Coalition, that, that we really want to put the, put the um, people on these action teams in a comfortable place. Um, they don't feel like we're going to step in and judge. We're going to let them work the process. Um, certainly, if they have questions, you, you know, we'd be there to answer questions. But uh, for the most part, we're trying to be that um, sitting in the peanut gallery a little bit and just letting the process take care of itself. So qu questions on the agenda or any of the comments that I made there? Okay. Yeah, Sean? Uh, I've had several people ask how and when they'll be notified. Mm -hmm. In a... Uh, we have letters ready to go after, should you approve these tonight, which I would assume you're going to do. Um, we have the letters uh, ready to go, and we have emails ready to go. So um, first thing tomorrow morning, we would notify folks. Uh, Reggie, do you want to talk a little bit about the kind of the process we use for selecting these memberships? Sure. So I think as the board is aware of it for the benefit of those here and anyone watching at home, um, the board's placed an emphasis and a, a uh, importance on hearing from the community. Any good board's going to want to do that. We've done that in the past with task force, different community involved uh, committees and that sort of thing. And clearly coming out of the referendum, that's paramount that we engage the community as much as we possibly can going forward. And so the method behind and the purpose behind the guiding coalition and the action team is to do just that. And I'll be the first to say, and, and not going to surprise my colleagues here, I was kind of concerned that uh, given the size that we thought we might get turned out for this, that we wouldn't get that many people being interested, both because of the commitment and just I didn't know that there would be that level of interest. And I'm thrilled to say I was completely wrong. And we've had, is the number around 175 yeah, I think individuals that's who have been nominated or have self-nominated themselves to participate on one of these two teams. And I think that's fantastic. Um, it says that folks are clearly engaged and want to be a part of this process, which is what we want and what we need. So we had a number of individuals over the last few weeks uh, either not be nominated or self-nominate for either or both teams. And then we went through a process to try to make those teams as what's the word I should use, balanced as possible, as representative as possible. And we looked at a lot of different factors, um, not just where they're located in the city, right. uh, which is a factor, but um, to the point that we knew we wanted to have a mix of people who supported and the people who opposed, um, as well as did they come from the business community? Were they perhaps in the district as a staff member? Were they parents? Were they not parents? All those factors went into that mix, uh, and certainly paramount in that is what the individual was either nominated for or what they self-nominated themselves for. We tried to take that into, into account as well. And so we've ended up with, uh, I think, two proposed for the board to review and, and, as Rod said, hopefully act on tonight, two lists um, which creates the guiding coalition and creates the action team, the operations and facilities action team in particular, that does that, that engages the people who said, I want to be a part of this, or perhaps someone said that they, we think that this person should be a part of it. They'll have the chance to accept or decline. And, uh, and then, as Rod has outlined, to put their, put their time and effort into helping the community and uh, consult with the board in terms of how we move forward. So it's been a very um, open process to let people say that they'd like to participate, say how they'd like to participate, and then we've tried to be as um, inclusive as we can as well as balanced, as I, as I said before, as we can. And I think that's represented in the two lists that we're going to act on tonight. But I want to emphasize something Rod said. When we communicate that to people starting tomorrow morning, um, people will have the chance to say yes or no. Right. And it's not like they have to do this. Obviously, if they were nominated by somebody else and didn't even realize they were nominated, 
which I suspect is not the case in most instances. But if that were to happen, they can say no. Or, as Rod said, Thursday night if they come and they see that I'm on the guiding coalition and, you know, that's not quite what I wanted to be. I wanted to be more in the weeds. I want to get in the details. Great. They can come and say maybe I'd like to make a switch. So they're going to have that flexibility. But I think we've got a very good uh, mix and, again, a tremendous number of people, to their credit, who said they're willing to step up and put the time in because it's going to take some time. It's going to take some real effort on their part, the administration's part, the board's part. Uh, but we've got a great involvement in the community. Yes, Matt. Just uh, one group you left out that's part of the Guiding Coalition, that's students. I think we have oh, a yeah. healthy Good. number of current students who are going to be able to help shape their future and have that sense of stewardship for the subsequent. And they're living it day in, day out, so that's a great point. Yep. Any comments? Anything else? Other comments cool. on that part? Sean? I just have one question. Um, I don't know that I've heard or that many people have heard or understood. Is there an end date? Or if, end? if, yeah, like if and when they sign up for the Guiding Coalition, are they on it for eternity? Till death goes Or do we know, sorry. The, the know? only thing we've asked people to lock in is through October, is it 9th? Okay. Um, but it depends how the work goes right. um, because we we did say in the kind of that nomination process can you commit to the, at right. least these nights and um, and for the most part I almost always they committed that they would give us until then um, and I can't see any reason at least right now that we wouldn't meet at least through October 9th regardless of the work type of work we get accomplished so that's the end point. It isn't to say that there isn't a request to continue meeting depending on the work, but that was the base base of the, the, the request that we asked of people. That's what we asked people to sign up for. Yes. Through the, yeah. For both teams. Um, we, what the um, action team will get is that they don't know about um, is some additional meetings. We actually locked in some additional meetings. So in their letter, one of the things we point out is, is these are the nights, and then because the action team is doing a lot of the legwork, um, that we've added the other off those every two weeks meetings on there. That's why I say for some that might be a little more than they bargained for. Um, for others who are really involved, that's just maybe a little energy, that extra energy they wanted knowing that there's more meetings. Questions? Okay. Sarah, you want to pull up then the, I'm sorry, I, that ahead. was not very good wait time. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Okay. Guiding coalition. Guiding co uh, yeah. Coalition. So, guiding coalition membership, just in, um, that we're going to ask you to approve tonight. Um, again, as was mentioned, there's a representation of every one of the um, from teachers, admin, students, business, community, city government, parents, um, non-certs, and alumni. Um, there's every representation. Uh, there's representation th from uh, the heat map of, of where folks live. Um, and there's also representation uh, that we believe uh, represents the diversity in our community as well. So um, we will ask for that being the guiding coalition. And then if you pull up the Excellence in Operations Facilities, same thing, three columns worth of, of folks there. Again, the same type of thing. We, we work hard to balance all of the involved people so that, in, that passionate and involved people are on guiding and pass, passionate and involved people are on excellence uh, group. The, um, Sarah, would you pull up a... Uh, the next document too, just so I can give an overview. Yep. Yeah. We've all seen this. This is um, what I reviewed, so we can go to the next one, Sarah. Okay. Uh, the next document's the, the strategic roadmap. That's the one that I talked about earlier. The board, administration, teachers groups, we got together and we built on core values. We built on a vision for 2016 and our strategic directions. 
and you'll be seeing those at home will be seeing our strategic directions, our uh, monitoring reports coming up shortly. And um, all of these things have been for about 18 months worth of work. And it will be important that the, the consultative groups that are working with us kind of get a flavor for where we've been and where we hope to go. So that's this document. The next document is the school board. What I would say is if you're a business owner, uh, business owners get together and they set what's most important for their goals. These are the goals and uh, objectives that are most strategic directions, most important to our school board. School board put these together um, through a, a series of uh, meetings and a retreat. And um, the, again, the folks who are involved on Thursday night will get an idea of in each column, It's this is what we... Um, the board will, will ask of the administration to accomplish in each given year. And uh, those are in pencil, not ink, because some years we have to move and adjust based on priorities or things that happen, but it's, um, it's really important. Our board um, evaluates their own performance based on how, how well we're able to accomplish um, these, these goals. The next document that will be in the packet is um, Dennis will take us through again. We've um, our teacher group, our administrative group, and our school board has been trained in the ELS or the Educational Leadership System, and that will talk about each person's role in our community from consultative to governance to management. And it's just again, it's helping folks understand what's expected of them so that we don't. Um, Get, get off on our expectations of, of each other. That's, we found that to be real helpful. It's not a lengthy, heavy philosophical conversation. It's just some real practical uh, ways to help us how we're going to govern. And then lastly, we have what's called guiding change documents. I know it's hard to see out there, but they're also on the district's website after they're approved tonight. Um, actually, the um, School board has already approved. We have the technology approved. That was approved uh, in the past. Academics were approved in the past. And then I'm asking tonight um, that we approved uh, in the guiding change document for our operations and uh, facilities group that this gives us the, um, the unacceptable means. In other words, if we as a board say there are, that we're going to be open-minded and flexible, we have to really make sure we continue to focus that way, but there might be some deal breakers. And so the purpose to a guiding change document is that we can, um, and most times, to be honest, the unacceptable means are either statutory or ethical or legal kinds of deal breakers. Um, you know, it, it's not the kinds of things we won't consider a turf field or we won't consider whatever. It's just the rules of how we operate. But then on this guiding change document is the why on the left-hand side. Um, for example, um, for the academic group, uh, we know that there's an achievement gap, and we judge it to be unacceptable. That's the why. We're not, we're not satisfied. If you go to the far right column on academics, the what might be that we um, establish um, norms or we establish... Um, programming to eliminate the achievement gap at the same time raising the score for all all students in the system or something along those lines. So we have the why, the unacceptable means, and then the results, the what. And we'll share that with everybody too. We'll have the academics, the technology, and the uh, excellence in operations and facilities uh, for everybody that evening. And I think, Sarah, that's the last document, right? Any um, questions, comments, or To take in. There's, there's a lot of information here, but I, I again, I just want to echo what Reggie said. Um, you know, to have uh, folks sign up to be a part of this is just a, a real gift, and um, I, I don't think anyone up here takes that lightly. And um, the fact that we've got people that can animately disagree with each other during the politics of education but yet can come together for kids in a, in a community. I think that says a lot about the deep roots and the integrity of the Shakopee community. And um, I know there are, there are people um, that, are, that are 
maybe a little bit nervous and anxious about Thursday night, maybe myself included. Um, but I know at the end of Thursday night, um, things will feel a lot better. And um, there's a tremendous amount of hope when you have 175 people from this community signing up to do better for our kids and our community. And I do want to stress, by the way, community. Um, we, we um, this last week, I spoke at the chamber with Brad Tapke, our mayor, and it is quite clear that um, the, the, the city is, is also ready to be open-minded, opening and flexible to working with uh, the schools because I think there have been a lot of opportunities that if we had partnered together and brought proposals together, whether it's a senior center, a community center, um, whatever um, it could be, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit there that if we do this thing together and we do it right, I think it's going to be in the best interest of all students, but all people in our community as well. So I'm just really thankful, really excited. People are willing to um, give us a chance to um, steer the ship right, and, um, and we will do that. So would you like a motion to uh, approve the Guiding Coalition membership as well as the... Uh, uh, the guiding change documents? Yes, and I would ask that you appoint uh, the guiding coalition uh, per what the board said they were going to do and then accept membership on the action team. And I see Chuck has a question. Chuck? Well, actually, I'm ready to make that motion uh, with the understanding that if people find that that really is the role they want, there may be the ability to move, but otherwise I'll, I'll make the motion yeah. to appoint the guiding coalition and accept the uh, action team membership. Thank you. Second. Any other discussion? Just to clarify, is that just limited to the membership, not the changing guiding change document? We're going to That's treat correct. that separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? I just want to say, echo what Reggie said. Everybody said, great turnout. I know a lot of people on this list. Um, a lot of people are friends I haven't met yet. Looking forward to uh, getting to know them and participating in the very passionate uh, debate that is solution driven and, and ready to move this community forward. If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion will pass. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we accept the guiding change document as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing. Oh, go ahead. I heard you take a deep breath. <laughs> Getting ready. Okay. That was the Mountain Dew talking. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion besides Mountain Dew? <laughs> If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion will carry. Thank you, everybody, for all the work you did and for the people who volunteered for these committees. We really appreciate it. Well, I'll move to item eight, which is new uh, business action items, and this is the 2014-15 uh, preliminary capital expenditure budget, and Mike will present. Short PowerPoint, I hope, to keep it short. Oh, Mr. Beaker gave me his time to <laughs> do. That's a rumor. It has to be, it has to be in writing. That takes board motion. <laughs> Absence uh, is forfeiting. So uh, we're talking about preliminary capital expenditure budget. Uh, what we'll talk about is the budget, uh, the building fund position as of uh, the end of March. Uh, re uh, review detail the proposed 2014 projects and uh, what we've come up with so, uh, to date. Uh, action item is to approve the preliminary budget and then we'll have a kindergarten edition update. Uh, capital budget, I believe it was in your it's paper. In your, it's in the packet. And mm -hmm. In your packet and this, this is my PowerPoint abilities. <laughs> as limited as they are. So uh, revenues were going to be in 2015 uh, is, are going to be about 3.9 million. Uh, that's up from 2.7 and, and mainly that's the lease levy we're using for the kindergarten additions. And, um, and uh, Mike, just for clarity again, what budget or what budget area are we staying in right now? This is the capital budget only right. currently. It's not the building fund. Capital only, not general, uh, not adding staff or any of that stuff. Uh, so you can kind of see some of our major, our copiers, our lease space. Uh, curriculum will uh, remain about the same uh, on the capital budget. 
technology. Uh, we are adding a new initiative to include Infinite Campus, the finance system. So we'll be moving from Lawson. We've talked to the county. They're, they're upgrading, and we don't have enough internal support to continue with Lawson. So we're moving to Infinite Campus. Hopefully the internal support will. That's our student system. They also have a finance system, which a number of their people come that come from Lawson. So, so it, it feels like a good fit, and we'll be uh, exploring it more, but uh, pretty close to uh, pulling the trigger on that one and, and uh, being online with La uh, Infinite Campus for the finance system in about, uh, about the January to March timeline. And so uh, equipment, again, 700000 leaving that about the same building level capital. We uh, bump up a little bit. Activities and uh, equipment for buildings and grounds, we bump up each of those. Uh, the equipment for buildings and grounds, uh, we're gonna need a new truck. When we've lost the transmission on a, I think it's a 98 or something like that, and it just, we're gonna need a new truck, so uh, that's why that one's a little bit higher this year. Health and safety, this is 270. Again, this is a preliminary budget, and uh, we will have a couple projects with Sweeney. They have some asbestos tile that'll need to be abated. And some of the in some of the rooms that we're adding carpet, you gotta take the tile off before you add the carpet, and then also the uh, 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 cafeteria here at Central has carpet on the cafeteria floor. When we pull that, uh, we'll probably pull up some asbestos tile as well. Asbestos tile is is debatable, and is once we start breaking it up, it's it's not a hazard, but it is a hazard. So that's uh, health and safety. Uh, so you can see that we're going from uh, to about four million eighty-seven thousand. Uh, we'll spend down our fund balance uh, one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars to about a million six thirty-five. Or that's what I would propose. Uh, the construction fund. Now this is fund six. Uh, what we're looking at is. Again, we're at about fourteen thousand dollars in cash currently. Uh, that doesn't a little, little bit more. Little more. More than thirteen thousand. Fourteen million. <laughs> yes, fourteen million. Sorry, yes, fourteen million. Uh, those comments give me every time. <laughs> the, uh, and he's our numbers guy. <laughs> he's our numbers guy. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Anyway, we'll have some possible landlord purchases. Uh, you know, it, what. We've, we've uh, set aside some money for that. We've set up, we have some land for sale by Jackson. Mike, uh, could you just hang uh, sure. for just a minute? The possible land purchases. Now, this is another perfect example of action team guiding coalition work here. We've thrown out numerous examples of what we might need, but um, we're not going to predetermine what we need. We're going to set a budget that will allow for flexibility of whatever the options are that come out of it. But that's why you see a range, too, of low and high, because we don't know for sure when we do that, if it's now or if it's later, and, of course, cost increase. So we did a spread here of, of possibilities. Right, and, and all the available board initiatives fall into that same category of these things aren't, aren't done yet. To, yep. You know, we're just, we're still exploring the possibilities. And this was just an administrative list that we've come up with and some ranges of things that we have out there that, you know, we have a 10-year 10, 10 capital plan that's $30 million, so mm -hmm. on deferred maintenance that hasn't been done. So uh, just once again, just these are the revenue side and the expenditure side for that. So you could see we, in I don't know if that got kind of cut off at the bottom, but it could be a plus $4 million or there could be a minus $5 million depending on what case and what choices are made. So uh, the uh, available board initiatives, I would suggest that we're going to do those two, about $200,000 worth of projects. Even it'll probably be less than that. I just want to have a little uh, something left over just in case there's uh, some things that come up over the summer that need to be done. Uh, kindergarten FF&E, 500000 to a million. We have been able to roll some of those uh, furniture 
and <laughs> fixtures and equipment into into the building projects at, into the least levy kindergarten. Uh, so that number is down a little bit, but it, we we budgeted about eight mil, eight hundred thousand for that uh, project uh, curriculum and, and equipment, and part of it's going to roll into the uh, into the least levy. Technology again, that's off off of uh, JP's plan on technology purchases. Uh, security phase two, I'm saying we don't know again what people want us to do, so I'm saying for the summer of 2015 we'd be working on those. They could move up, they could move back, uh, it just all depends. And again, though, Mike, those that we're talking about enhancements, um, making an, instead of the analog um, security cameras going to the digital. high def digital, yeah. whatever, that kind of thing, but that too that's kind of that weeds work that we talked about with action teams and so forth is we're, we're looking for our community to say what kind of an enhancement or investment do we want to make in these things. And it, it would be no surprise that when Mike lays these out, you can see these are elements of the, of the past referendum too, which makes sense that if they, those were our needs, now we have a chance to ask the community. Again, we're not assuming we're doing them. We're just putting a budget in there should, should the, the groups find that as an option. Uh, stadium initiatives, our track needs to be replaced. It needed to be replaced two years ago, and we put, you know, $50,000 in patches in it and things like that. But it's still inside corners are wearing out. And so we need to do something with that quickly or at, at some point. And, and again, uh, okay, you fix the track. Now do you fix the, is it a turf field? Is it a grass field? Is, you know, we have uh, lacrosse now. How do, we, how do we get all those things? And again, that's why we have the uh, action committee. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, once again, deferred maintenance projects beyond 2014. Last at the election, we had you know three million dollars uh, in in there for that. So again, <coughs> you could end up between four million positive and four million negative, just on what people decide. So you're looking tonight, Mike, for if this is a preliminary um, approval, correct? Right. And when will you come back for formal approval? Uh, well, uh, if we get the preliminary on the on on the uh, projects, uh, June 10th. So okay. we'll have two we have time. two committee meetings in there, and and again, <coughs> the board initiatives can wait. I mean, sure. Probably the 10-year plan improvements would, would like to get some action on. Right. That, but well, one thing I would add, Mike, is that um, I didn't, I don't think I said it before, but with the action team and the guiding coalition, the, the conceptual framework is that it's asking our community for help for the bricks and mortar. But what I didn't say is, is that if there are things in there that come out of it, that as consultative groups to the board, let's just say the track or the track and, you know, the grass or whatever it is, we do have some reserves, but we're looking for some of that feedback from the community to say, are these things that are so dire need that we'd consider moving them up and then not doing them on a referendum, for example? And what, what leverage does the city have if these are being used with the city and this uh, booster programs and so forth. So that gives us a chance to engage the boosters, the community, the city, the parks and rec, those kinds of things. But I think it's responsible of us to put a kind of a minimum and a maximum budget because if no one else partners with us, but yet the community says, this is a need, we want that track, now we have to figure out, I, you know, we probably would need to have to figure out a way because we aren't going to take track away from the kids, for example. So that's an example of why that's such a, I mean, a widespread of a budget there. Uh, the next uh, slide just shows some of the small projects that I was uh, suggesting in that $200 capital. Uh, some carpet at the uh, West Junior High offices, uh, East Junior High offices that, uh, need some carpet replacement. The carpet tiles at the entrances at the high school need to be replaced. They're pretty worn out after seven years. Uh, we need a condensation tank for our boiler at Central, uh, otherwise it won't work next fall. So 
So uh, we're trying to upgrade a little bit to the $30,000 thing, and, and uh, hopefully that lasts longer than the five years of the last one did. Uh, again, the remove carpet and, uh, at VCT and the cafeteria uh, for where the little kids eat. Uh, sun path, the word behind on our locks, we're bringing that. That's the only system that has two keys. A teacher has to have two keys, one to get in their door and one to get in into their uh, section or their uh, cluster. So we're trying to bring that up. And then the two lunch tables there and the four lunch tables yeah, at, uh, at uh, Eagle Creek are for the kindergarten additions we needed uh, uh, space there as well. So we'll, we'll seek um, preliminary approval of the uh, the budget. Is there any questions? I have okay. a question. Mike, I've not thought this through. There may be reasons why we couldn't even do this or shouldn't do it. You mentioned the truck and needing a new truck. Historically, and could we, would we ever consider approaching Shakopee Chev, Apple Ford, and saying, are you interested in donating, you know, a stripped-down model? They could put donated by Apple Ford on it. It's got Shakopee Public Schools on it. But maybe they need a write-off, or they're looking for a write-off, or they're just community-minded. Have we ever considered that? We, uh, I believe, when uh, Brian at the high school needed a truck for the con uh, construction trades, uh, we did get one from Apple Ford. Okay. Well, it would seem so to me that it's something we should explore or consider. We will. Worst thing I can say, no. Because the forty thousand, if he spends forty thousand on a truck, then he only. Or if he spends thirty thousand on a truck, he only has ten thousand for custodial equipment. So right. there's there's incentive to do that. So, so maybe what we'll I'll do too is send out team. let's send out to the board the um, policies as it pertains to the um, naming and advertising. Um, so we'll send that out to the board too, so you can look at that. Because if we, if we do that advertising, which I think is 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 a good idea, um, we just want to make sure we got our ducks in a row there and. So we'll, we'll get that out to you by the next school board meeting. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the preliminary capital budget. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? A second. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion will stand approved. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And then I just did want to bring us up uh, uh, to date with the kindergarten additions. All the buildings, again, were under budget, so uh, we're doing well there. We're looking at uh, other scope things that fit in with the, uh, fit in with the remodels. Uh, we'll uh, move some equipment costs to the project, the uh, smart boards, the projectors, that, uh, the short throw projector to use the smart board. Those things will be included in, in some of the costs now, maybe the, the tables and the chairs, uh, those kinds of things. We'll move some of that into that budget. Uh, again, uh, we've reviewed the 10-year plan to include some of the carpet replacement, some of the paint. Uh, we're fixing the storage at, uh, at Sweeney uh, to make that a little bit better. And it's all going to, we're, we're watching the budget closely, and ICS will probably have a budget update for us at the next, either at the April 28th or for sure by the May, uh, May 12th, 14th, whatever date that is. Uh, all buildings are re uh, for the construction process. We're receiving all the shop drawings. We're getting all the insurance, the performance bonds. The, all those things are finally starting to roll in. The signed contracts, those things, so that uh, uh, is coming together. Most of the fences got put in place uh, at all the buildings. Uh, I saw last weekend or last week that most of the uh, silt fencing is also in place. Uh, at all the buildings, and then, uh, they have started work today. They started work at Sweeney, and they started work at uh, Suntath. So there's a picture of uh, the uh, Sweeney looking from uh, that's looking from uh, Lions Park, and uh, so that's the hill is kind of going away, but uh, the door will still have the hill. We'll have the hill back. Uh, in place after after the addition goes up, so that uh, we'll use that door as an exit. I continue to use that door as an exit. This is looking from the west uh, towards the, that same area. You can see the orange spike, uh, the orange stake in front. It kind of gives us a, 
an uh, idea of how far that's coming out. You can see the uh, block has already been uh, delivered on the left-hand side there. And then another shot, I'm trying to get the orange stakes in there a little bit to kind of give you some uh, idea. And then again, there's some uh, some rebar down, down in front for your uh, viewing plate. <laughs> <laughs> we go to Sunpath. Uh, Sunpath is the only building where we had to take the uh, fuel storage tank out because it's right in the middle of the footing. So we need to move it closer to the uh, 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 boiler plant, uh, and there's plenty of room for all that to happen. But we needed to remove that, and, and that's what a, a storage tank looks after since 1998. It was in the ground, so it looks pretty good. Fiberglass. There's a couple nicks in it that I'm hoping they can fix before they put it back in because we're not we didn't pay for an additional new tank. So uh, uh, they'll get that fixed before they uh, reinstall that. Uh, again, that kind of came out. You can see the basketball hoop and then the tree and then there's an orange stake, a stake with an orange top on it. That's about where the tank came out of. That's looking from the east back at the sun path. Cafeteria is those large windows there. And then finally, uh, looking from the cafeteria, the excavated pit, you can see the, uh, the fence around the uh, playground. Uh, the, the fence is short and uh, just in front of the uh, ramp where they can use the playground, continue to use the playground equipment. You can see the silt fence behind the playground equipment, so it's been a little bit of a supervisory issue to keep the kids away from the silt fence, but. The principal understands what's happening, so uh, we have that same kind of situation over at Jackson. So they haven't started at Jackson, Red Oak, or Eagle Creek. I wasn't there. I didn't look today at Eagle Creek or Red Oak, so I don't know if they started there. But uh, I didn't see any excavation going on at Jackson. So, but anyways, the silt fence condition is the same at Jackson as it is at Jackson. That's what I have. Thank you. Thanks, uh, well, since there is no assistant superintendent update, we'll go right to the superintendent update. Sarah, I think you had uh, you had called to my attention that there was one one particular thing I needed to do. Yeah, shock piece celebrates reading. Okay, so the yeah, so the handout you have in front of the little slip of paper here is the. Uh, uh, a call out to the, that Shakopee Celebra Celebrates Reading, sponsored by our Rotary Club, is April 22nd from 1 to 145. Our first graders from across the district, plus SACs and Living Hope students, will be in, a, in attendance. And um, if we're going to be in attendance, it has the... Uh, An email address, please, RSVP to Joan Lynch. Joan Lynch. If we're going to be there or your respective. I, I believe you're going to be there. That's at the high school, correct? Oh, yeah. Very nice. Anything else, Rob? No, I don't have anything else. Uh, committee updates? Any committees been meeting? Other than Carver Scott no longer is in existence, we adjourned our last meeting because all the business of selling buildings and making sure the contracts were up to date is done. So MRFSEC is still in existence until we figure out a couple other of the uh, uh, fi finances. I think it's going to be around for another two months, but Carver Scott is officially gone. Nothing else from any other committees? If not, any other? Anything you want to add, Matt? Nope. Sean? Scott? Yeah, I just wanted to chime in for a second, just to kind of recap all the business that we approved for the um, Thursday night meeting, and just kind of say, I was just looking at all the documents, I mean, we've been going through this for, you know, a couple weeks now, we kind of knew what was going to happen, but for the folks at home and the folks that have just been appointed, um, my, I just wanted to put out there that this is so much bigger than just a conversation about a high school that you're about to get involved in. You're going to get into a level of detail um, and deal with business professionals and be able to work with 
um, top-notch facilitators, and just the process in general, and the exposure that people are about to get themselves uh, into, is something, I don't want to say it's something you'll ever do in your entire life, but I, I don't know of a time when, at least when I've been around there, this district will have had that much to offer a large group of people in such incredible detail, and I just really think it's, it's a testament to what this administration has been able to get put together quickly, but I also believe that the 170-some folks that are going to have this opportunity, it really is an opportunity, it's, you're going to see and hear and be a part of stuff that, I don't know, we've had task forces over the years, I'm sure many of them, I can't say that it's ever been to this level when you lay on the strategic planning and, and the road mapping, this is just a level of detail that I hope that uh, you're proud to be a part of it, and I, and I really <coughs> think that it's going to be, uh, uh, I don't want to say life-changing experience, that's dramatic, but I really think it's going to be huge, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it play out and to see the feedback uh, you know, from the community members that are going to be able to be a part of it. I think it's, um, I think quite frankly, uh, it's going to exceed every expectation that, that the folks that are, have just been appointed uh, probably are going to come in with. So I just wanted to say kudos to Superintendent Thompson and the rest of the administration for, you know, all the hard work putting it together, and I look forward to seeing what's going to come out of it. Chad? Yeah, um, I'm not terribly surprised that we got 175 people signing up. I mean, this is a, a school district that has always had people step up when asked, and, you know, just over last week, we uh, recognized volunteers at three of our schools, and I was at the uh, Jackson and uh, the Cafeteria Bowl represented, you know, uh, a couple hundred people that had put in over, you know, about 4,000 hours of work. And, and some of those are parents, and you kind of expect parents are going to do that, and maybe even grandparents, but, but there are members of just the community that have no other real ties to the school district are there volunteering because they think it's the right thing to do. So it, it, this is a community that always steps up for us, so I'm proud to be a part of that community. Angela? Good, thanks. Reggie? Uh, we'll go to uh, upcoming meetings and important dates, and I don't think I'll go all the way to October. <laughs> uh, April 17th is our Guiding Coalition meeting from 6 to 9 in the Shakopee High School Commons. April 28th is our board learning session at 5 p.m. April, I mean, May 12th is a board business meeting at 6 p.m., and May 22nd is the second meeting of the Gui Guiding Coalition at the uh, Shakopee High School Commons from 6 to 9. Um, uh, otherwise, now I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Awesome. <laughs> All those in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Now adjourn. Yeah. This one might be a challenge for us, Sarah. There is a lot today. <laughs>